Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Robert Duval was noted for his ability to quietly inhabit any characters, particularly average working people, bringing them fully but subtly to life. Duval is the most technically proficient, the most versatile and the most convincing actor on the screen in the United States. How Robert Duval became a popular actor with virtually no acting. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Best of the West – Robert Duval The True Tale of Robert Duval If any actor could be said to be incapable of a false moment, it's Robert Duval. Duval carries his profound talent lightly, with a master's relaxed assurance and effortless authority. Look at any Duval performance and you'll see that it has no use for glamour and that the work ethic is paramount. He toiled steadily as a character actor on episodic TV and in movies all through the 60s, and a supporting role in 1972's The Godfather was the first payoff. You could call him the anti-Redford. He had supporting roles in two Redford films, The Chase and The Natural. Advancing the cause of realism in screen acting with integrity and responsibility, and with no regard for the office of stardom. This elevation of acting to new heights of naturalism and simplicity assumes an almost ethical dimension when linked to Duval's social realist insistence on sticking to the truth of real life and experience. Much of Duval's work belongs in a cinematic pantheon of American masculinity, where his enduring theme is a familiar one the temperamentally solitary or difficult man's uneasy accommodation with domesticity. Duval's unshakable dedication to and curiosity about the truth of ordinary lives in all their contradictions, to the sublime or exotic that can lie just beneath the everyday carries over into his forays behind the camera. Veteran actor and director Robert Selden Duval was born on January 5, 1931 in San Diego, California to Mildred Virginia, an amateur actress and William Howard Duval, a career military officer who later became an admiral. Despite the lack of stability, his early life was relatively peaceful. After graduating Principia College with a bachelor's degree in drama in 1953, Duval decided to follow a path similar to his father's and enlisted in the US Army. During his time in the army, Duval leveraged his passion and took up acting. While stationed at Camp Gordon, he acted in plays such as Room Service. Later, due to his having served during the years of the Korean War, the media would often misunderstand his participation during the fighting. He left the military after two years of service at the rank of Private First Class. Upon returning to civilian life, Duval used the GI Bill to fuel his passion for acting. He moved to New York and enrolled in the Neighborhood Playhouse School of Theatre in 1955. He was classmates with other future stars such as Dustin Hoffman, Gene Hackman and James Kahn. During his time at school he supported himself by working the register at Macy's, sorting mail and driving trucks. Duval ended up living with Hoffman and Hackman in an apartment. According to Duval, his time living with the duo was fun. He said, it was a lot of fun, Dustin was a lot of laughs. We'd go into a bar trying to pick up girls and he had the worst pick-up lines. It didn't take long for Duval to snap up acting jobs in numerous plays. He found work in at least five shows in 1955 and many more in the ensuing years. He continued to act on and off Broadway well into the 70s. His television debut came in 1959 in an episode of The Jailbreak, and he made guest appearances into the 60s. A couple of years later, he featured on his first film, To Kill a Mockingbird. This film signalled his break into cinema and kick-started his rise to fame. Duval was cast in the film on the recommendation of screenwriter Horton Foote, who met Duval at Neighbourhood Playhouse during a 1957 production of Foote's play The Midnight Caller. Foote, who would collaborate with Duval many more times over the course of their careers, said he believed Duval had a particular love of common people and ability to infuse fascinating revelations into his roles. Foote described Duval as our number one actor. 
His career took off after that and he went on to win the Best Actor Academy Award for playing Max Sledge in Tender Mercies. In the film, Duval played a country musician trying to rebuild his life in Texas and recover from alcoholism. His work is natural and grounded. To work with Duval you seem like you're not acting, you know? In fact, there better not be too much acting going on around him because he's so grounded and so real. As a performer, Duval is one of the most highly regarded actors in movies. In a nearly 40-year career, Duval has made close to 80 films. That's almost two a year and has branched out beyond acting to writing, directing and producing. For all his current celebrity, Duval emphasised that he chose to become an actor because he loved the work, not because he wanted to be famous. I look at myself as a hired hand, so to speak, Duval said when asked about the variety of roles he's willing to play on screen. I've always been able to cross over and do some leading parts and some supporting parts. And he pointed out his willingness to play supporting roles helps provide the time and money to work on the writing and directing projects. Often praised for the depth that he brings to his characters, Duval said his goal has always been to avoid one-dimensional portrayals. I always try to find the contradiction in each character, he said. It's not always one thing or the other. It's always a mix. It's a strategy that works, he thinks, because he is comfortable in his own skin. A leading man and character actor since the 1960s, Robert Duval has specialised in taciturn cowboys, fierce leaders and driven characters of all types. Robert Duval's passionate performances have made him one of Hollywood's most admired and respected actors and garnered him numerous awards over the years. Duval later played the notorious malefactor Ned Pepper in True Grit, but his breakout role was that of Tom Hagen in The Godfather and The Godfather Part II, the former film earning him an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor. He received another Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor in A Civil Action and for his role as Lieutenant Colonel Kilgore in Apocalypse Now. He also received a nomination for Best Actor in a Leading Role in The Great Santini as Lieutenant Colonel Bull Meacham, who was loosely based on world-famous marine aviator Colonel Donald Conroy. Duval won an Oscar for Best Actor for his role as country and western singer Max Sledge in Tender Mercies. Foote was rumoured to have written the lead role for Duval, who had always wanted to play a country singer and contributed ideas for the character. Foote denies this, claiming he finds it too constraining to write roles for specific actors, but he did hope Duval would be cast in the role. Duval was rumoured to have written the country music for Tender Mercies himself. Duval claims to have only written a few background secondary songs. Duval did, however, do his own singing and he insisted that it be added to his contract that he sing the songs himself. Duval said regarding the subject, what's the point if you're not going to do your own singing? They're just going to dub somebody else. I mean, there's no point to that. Actress Tess Harper, who starred alongside Duval in Tender Mercies, said Duval inhabited the character so fully that she only got to know Max Sledge and not Duval himself. Director Bruce Beresford too said the transformation was so believable to him that he could feel his skin crawling up the back of his neck the first day of filming with Duval. He directed the critically acclaimed The Apostle about a preacher on the run from the law and Assassination Tango, a thriller about one of his favourite hobbies, Tango. He received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame on September 18, 2003. Duval's acting career has been prolific and includes a broad range of roles. His military experience came into play for a number of roles in his career, including his portrayal of Major Frank Burns in M.A.S.H. One of his most famous roles was Lieutenant Colonel Kilgore in Apocalypse Now, where he delivered the famous line, Charlie Don't Surf. Over the course of his career, Duval has been nominated for six Oscars and won one of them in 1984 for Best Actor in a Leading Role for his part in Tender Mercies. Duval has accumulated numerous other accolades and continues to act to this day. He has been married four times, the first to Barbara Benjamin from 1964 until 1975. He then married Gail Youngs and Sharon Brophy. In 2005, Duval married Luciana Pedrazzi, granddaughter of famous Argentine aviator Susanna Ferrari Billinghurst. 
he met Pedraza on a street in Buenos Aires, Argentina. They were both born on January 5th, but Duval is 41 years older. They have been together since 1997. Duval and Luciana have been active supporters of ProMua, a non-profit organization dedicated to helping Latin Americans' poorest women help themselves through microcredit business training and healthcare linkages. Duval speaks fluent Spanish and maintains a farm in the plains in Faquir County, Virginia. Nowadays, Duval has lived away from the fast pace of life Hollywood is known for. He lives at a horse ranch in Virginia with his fourth wife, Luciana. The pair met in Argentina and they tied the knot in 2005. Duval lives exclusively on his ranch, except work takes him to Los Angeles or New York. The legendary actor has made an impact in Hollywood over the years. And that longevity is what prepared Duval for yet another role, for which he never needed to audition, that of a sage observer. Having been through decades of change in Hollywood, he has a unique perspective on what differs from the early days of the silver screen to the multi-million dollar productions that make their way to cinemas today. Everything's more realistic now, Duval explains, less staccato and more lifelike. From the fantasy worlds that made their way to theatres in the 1950s and 60s, the gritty realism that is pervasive in cinema today supports his point. He used a tried and true method he observed from one of the greatest actors of all time as proof. Marlon Brando used to watch Candid Camera, and that's what influenced his wonderful gifts. It's no wonder that acting has improved to mirror reality since then, and less a wonder that someone as quietly observant and willing to learn as Duval has evolved alongside the craft. This dedication to an honest, reality-based portrayal of characters has served him well. Duval still maintains aspirations and has never lost the dreams that powered he and his friends from start to stardom. But his journey has taught him not to map it out so carefully. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Robert Duval? Both brilliant and basic, he can't resist putting his dreams out into the world. Filmmaking's a continuously surprising medium.